Well, greetings viewers and voyeurs with Got That Funk, and this is a video response to Take Shot Action, uh, whose channel I discovered when I was compiling the We Are YouTube video a month or two ago. Um, he's got a, a sharp mind and a big heart, and I really enjoy his channel. I will obviously link it in the description below. TSA, how you doing? I'm Paul. Um, as you know, we were talking the other day in your video comments, uh, the video was called Life and Death, and we're talking about whether or not free will is an illusion. And the character limit and so forth uh, kind of inhibited me from making the point the way I wanted to make it. So I thought I would make you this video response. And, um, you know, I don't necessarily expect to change your mind here. Uh, but I do, you know, I think you're pretty bright. And I want to give you a few things to consider that you probably, well, you don't seem to have really thought through yet. And like I say, if you don't change your mind, it's no harm, no foul to me. Because, you know, each to their own. But I just wanted to sort of give you some stuff to roll around in the old noggin and uh, see where it takes you. Now, human beings obviously are intelligent animals and I think you and I would both agree that all animals uh, have instinct and uh, instinct t tends to cause animals to behave in a particular way uh, regardless of any thought process. Um, you know, like for example if I hit my finger with a hammer when I'm building something I'm going to say ouch. It won't be something I think about, it's just going to happen. Um, you know, and let's talk about a, a, a nice easy example here. If, if I've got a wasp crawling around on my windowsill, I'm not the kind of person who will smash it with a rolled up newspaper or something or try to kill the wasp. I'm the kind of guy who will trap the wasp under a glass and slide a piece of paper under it and carry him outside and throw him out the window. That's just me. But what if I wasn't quite that clever but I still wanted to get rid of the wasp and I just sort of took the wasp between two fingers and I wanted to throw him out with my bare hand. What do you think is going to happen? Exactly. The wasp is going to fucking sting me. And he's going to sting me because that's his instinct. He perceives a threat and he's going to lash out in the only way he knows how and he's going to sting me. Now, human beings being intelligent animals, um, we don't necessarily lash out for no apparent reason. And it's not no apparent reason. The wasp perceived an existential threat. And I think most human beings, if they perceive that their life is an un under threat, will probably be more inclined to behave in an aggressive way, just like the wasp did. It's an instinct, survival. But what about small infractions when your existence isn't in jeopardy? We do have uh, uh, this feeling that we can choose our behavior because unlike the wasp, we can see that there are alternatives to stinging. Um, for example, let's say someone steps on my foot. Now I can respond to that in any number of different ways and each possible response can have any number of different factors which cause me to choose that response. For example, I suppose the most passive thing I could do if someone stepped on my foot would be to apologize to them because I was obviously in their way because they stepped on my foot even though that's not true but believe me people do apologize for other people stepping on them all the time it happens to me in this country I live in the UK and it happens all the time you someone steps on your foot and then you apologize to them or you step on someone's foot and they'll apologize to you in America it doesn't work that way you step on someone's foot you apologize to them so it's, it's just a different culture Anyway, I'm fucking digressing. My whole point is, say someone steps on my foot, the most passive thing I can do is apologize to them for me being in their way. The next rung up from that in terms of passive behavior would be to just to completely ignore it, not to make any verbal or uh, gestures or anything like that, just ignore it and so forth. Um, one step up from that would be, I suppose, to sort of clear my throat and expect an apology. Or one step up from that would be to sort of flash them a dirty look. One step up from that might be to make a nasty comment like, hey, watch where you're fucking going. You know, one step up from that might be to call them a cunt or some other name like that. One step up from that might be to stomp on their foot. One step up from that might be to threaten them with violence. And one step up from that might be to kill them, I suppose. And this is the thing. I'm pretty sure that I can speak for both of us when I say there's no circumstance where someone stepping on my foot will cause me to kill them. But, it is a possible response, just like that wasp, it's a possible response to behave in the most extreme way is possible, and that works on both ends of the spectrum, it's completely possible. 
that I might apologize to someone even though they stepped on my foot. Why would I do that? Well, let's say, for example, it was an elderly senior citizen type person and uh, they just took half a step backwards and didn't realize I was so close to them and they stepped on my foot. Chances are I am going to apologize to that person because I am predisposed, predisposed is a very important word here, to defer to the older generation. And that's based on my past experiences and how I've been raised and so forth. But I'll get to that in a second. So we've got all these different options about how you can behave, and there's obviously more than I've listed off, but everything between apologize to them to kill them, there's all these different ranges of behaviors that we could engage in. And which one we choose isn't dependent on our freedom of choice. It isn't dependent on our free will. It will be determined by other factors. For example, what kind of mood am I in? Am I in a good mood or a bad mood? And it's not even as straightforward as a good or bad mood because why I'm in a good mood might have something to do with how I behave and why I'm in a bad mood might have something to do with how I behave. For example, if I'm in a bad mood, why? Am I in a bad mood because I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Am I in a bad mood because I didn't get enough sleep or my dinner's not settling with me properly? Am I in a bad mood because 20 people have already fucking stepped on my foot today and this is the 21st motherfucker? You know, why am I in a bad mood? Why I'm in a bad mood will definitely factor into how I behave. And if I'm in a bad mood, I'm more likely to behave closer to the middle of the spectrum than on the passive end. That's just a fact. People who are in a bad mood, angry or upset or whatever, are more likely to behave in an assertive manner. That's just a fact. Um, whether I'm in a good mood or not also would be a factor, you know. Why am I in a good mood? Am I in a good mood because I just woke up that way? Am I in a good mood because it's a sunny day? Did I just get paid? Did I just get laid? Why am I in a good mood? You know, why I'm in a good mood will be a factor as well. So you've got my mood and then all these subcategories which will partly factor into whether I behave in a passive way or an aggressive way. Then there's the environment. Are people watching? Are people laughing at me because I just got my foot stepped on? Um, are people expecting some kind of confrontation? Um, is it daytime, nighttime? There's all sorts of different factors which will determine environmental factors which will not determine the choice but will lead into that consideration. Then there's my past experiences, you know. Um, have I stepped on lots of people's feet in the past and had people snap at me? And I know it feels horrible to have someone snap at you for stepping on your feet, so I wouldn't snap at someone because I don't want to put someone else through what they, what I've been through. Or, you know, like I say, even that day, if someone's been stepping, on, people have been stepping on my feet all day, that's a past experience which is going to contribute to my frustration level, and therefore, you know, I might behave more assertively than otherwise. All sorts of things, when it comes to past experiences, it's such a vast category that I'm not even going to try to make more examples. But your past experiences will definitely be a huge factor in why you behave a certain way to certain stimuli. And obviously, last but not least to consider um, is the perpetrator. You know, um, I'm definitely going to behave differently if it's a 13-year-old boy who's gone and done it maliciously or mischievously uh, and then ran away to his friends and laughed. I'm going to snap at him probably, or at least give him a dirty look, whereas if it's some six foot ten guy with a prison tattoo on his face, uh, looking confrontational, I am probably not going to behave in an assertive manner. Again, is it a male or a female? Did it seem to be intentional or accidental? Um, are they young? Are they old? Uh, did they even realize they did it? All these kinds of things and more about the perpetrator will factor into how I come to my conclusion and make my decision, make my choice. But it's not really a choice because there's no way that I'm going to mouth off at six foot ten Bubba. No way. I don't like confrontation. I've never been in a fight and certainly someone stepping on my foot is not worth getting my ass kicked over. So it's just not going to happen. His size has made my decision for me, not my free will. Her sex, the fact that she's a woman means I'm definitely not going to lash out at her. I probably won't even give her a dirty look because I am predisposed to want women to like me. You know what I mean? So we all have these sorts of predispositions and it's the predisposition which is making the choice for you, not your freedom of will. You might have this illusion of having free will because the more things you have to consider when making a choice, even if you make that choice in a split second, um, 
the more considerations there were to making the choice, the more you feel like you've made a free choice. When in fact, it's the opposite. You're just like the wasp. You're behaving according to your nature, and your nature is built up on how you perceive and deal with all these different sort of factors which are surrounding you and within the experience of having someone step on your foot. Okay? And um, as regards free will, I'm going to just go off on another little tangent here. Um, you know, you're in charge of your own mind, right? That is basically what free will implies. But can you decide not to love your parents anymore, or your siblings, or your children? Can you just decide not to? Just decide? Can you decide not to love your girlfriend anymore when you loved her yesterday? Just like that. Can you decide not to uh, say ouch when you strike yourself with a hammer? You have to think about it beforehand in order to make that decision right? It's just going to happen otherwise. Um, TSA, I know you've suffered from depression in the past. Can you just decide not to be depressed? Isn't depression a state of mind? Um, you know, so it's not as straightforward as it sounds. You know, free will is a very nice concept, and we have no alternative, really, but to take responsibility for the choices that we make, because we do have the sensation that we are making our choices freely and with that sensation of free agency comes the responsibility of taking responsibility for the choices that we make even though without necessarily realizing it our subconscious is doing most of that decision making process for us not our conscious mind our conscious mind might refine the uh, the detail a little bit but it's not going to determine it for us pre-existing factors and extraneous circumstances are what is going to cause us to behave one way or another, not our free will. So I hope that's made the point for you. Um, I want to thank you and everybody else for watching this video. Keep up the good work. Take shot action. I love your channel. And, um, you know, I look forward to a robust discussion in the comment section with anybody who wants to make a, a comment. Thank you very much for watching this video. Until next time, all, may all your ups and downs be ups.